Welcome to our 2020 shop tour and upcoming project car reveal. That's right, everyone. We are going to unveil our 2020, at least summer project cars to all of you. We've been hiding them in the back of the shop there for quite a long time. In fact, some of those cars have been in the fleet for over a year now. Pete's hoarding skills have come into play again and he's been stashing away some really good stuff back there that I know you're all gonna be super stoked on. I know we're super pumped to get building them and we're running out of things to do around here. The M3 is almost done, the Evo's almost done, so we are gonna be moving on to those cars shortly. But before we show you that stuff, I should give you a quick update on the M3. It is pretty much ready to go. It just needs a tune and Pete's gonna change out the valve seals because she's a little smoky at the moment. So uh, stay tuned for uh, an episode on that soon. And uh, you might also notice a few other things have changed around here, including our two post lift here. We have upgraded from our old rotary to this brand new Ben pack. It is a 10,000 pound unit, asymmetrical design. And part of the reason we changed out to this setup is that it's much lower profile. So it's gonna allow us to get our lowered cars on the lift much easier than our old rotary would. With our old lift, we used to actually put the car on the dollies and jack it up in the air or drive it up on ramps or on wood to get it so it was high enough to clear. And now with the Ben pack, as you can see, Clears under there no problem, and being asymmetric, we also have the advantage of the doors being able to open much wider than before. We also installed the old lift backwards, which presented some problems because we designed it so that you would drive the car in nose first, but to shoot videos, we really need to go in back end first. So we've installed the bend pack in the correct orientation. All in all, this is a big win for us to, to have the new bend pack in the right position for backing the car in, and obviously having access to the underneath of our lowered cars with this low profile setup. It's gonna make it that much easier to get the cars on the lift and up in the air the way we need them. This of course is my partner, Connie Selica, my 1977 Toyota Celica that you may have seen on our channel recently because we've been going pretty hard at it. And by we, I mean, well, kind of me <laughs> lately. It's been a, a, lon a lonesome job working on her. And uh, this is Beamsy, her life partner, a 3S GE Beams blacktop motor that is gonna power this car once we put it all back together after paint. Speaking of paint, I'm still leaning towards a gunmetal Although I have been having a bit of a crisis lately because there's a used car lot up the street from me and every car in the lot is gray. And I'm like, man, am I, am I being boring by choosing gunmetal? Should I choose yellow or orange or something bright and shiny? So let me know in the comments if I'm crazy to pin a gunmetal, but uh, stay tuned for the next episode of Connie Selica where I power wash and really deep clean the Beams engine. So uh, that's what you've got to look forward to before it goes down to Street Bandito in Baltimore once I'm able to cross the border with her and get her properly painted. Dave called it a hoard, but really this is a collection of parts that come in very handy when we are working on our vehicles and we need something fast. This is Tranny Alley. Look at all of these gearboxes. There is a CD09. We've got an R154 that we're going to be using pretty soon. We've got an S2000 gearbox, 240 gearbox, BMW. We've got a spare VQ back there. We've got a lot of them and motor wise, we have even more. Look at this, an RB26. Geez, I wonder what that's gonna be going into. We've got the S54 back there. Goodness, I've got two spare 2Js. SR20, so this came out of the um, 240SX, the K-Swap 240. And Dave and I have been pining to build another motor after building the Evo motor, so we may do this and put it into a future vehicle, which uh, I'm not gonna spoil a surprise on, but you may be thinking S chassis, you may be right. Obviously we've got uh, a, an F20 motor from an S2000. This, I think I purchased way back as a spare for the Badass 2000 and I didn't end up using it. So it's sitting here just in case. We still have those ITBs off the Badass 2000. You know, you can make something work. And this right here is just a junkyard K motor. We always need K motors. And I've got an old, I don't even know what it is. It's a Euro spec. Uh, three and a half liter inline six. I think it's like an MB35. I don't know my BMW engines, but this was actually a freebie. A guy left me a card on, uh, on my E28 and said, hey, I've got this high compression Euro motor sitting at my house, taking up space. I, I noticed your car. If you want it, you can have it. I couldn't pass that up. I never can. And this over here is the great wall of tires where we keep past, present, and future project car tires that are gonna be put on some vehicles and whatnot. We've got Continentals, we've got some Advans, we've got some Nankangs, we've got them all. 
One of the next projects that we are gonna be working on very, very soon is the K-Swap 240. It is back and it is getting some proper performance upgrades. We are have decided to stick NA. So we're gonna see how far we can take this K24 engine. We're gonna do a set of cams, do a, an intake manifold upgrade, try to make like, I wanna say 250 to the wheel. Let's hope we, we, we can get there on that junkyard engine. We're also going to do uh, a brake upgrade. This car suffered with the, the brake bias and just improper setup right now. So we're going to a system from Coreform Motorsports, which is pretty awesome. I can't wait to show you guys. And I've got a solution from Cooler Works for the shifter because I do not like the way that shifter is in there right now. I want something very, very track ready. So big things coming on this car. Another project that I'm gonna be jumping to almost immediately is my 930 turbo. This thing has been sitting around kind of neglected. The plan for this is to go and do somewhat of like a Japanese themed build on this. I've got a nice big wing. I've got some new bumpers and I've got some wheels that uh, are going to blow your mind. They're going to require some custom work to make fit up, but uh, just think of the D37s. So I'm super excited for that one. And you guys know the Evo. We, at this point, we are almost ready to fire this thing up. I've still got a couple of things to finish up inside in terms of wiring, but everything is coming together very well. So the next episode on this will be us starting it up when me and Dave can get back together and going to the dyno. I can't wait. I literally cannot wait. Like the anticipation is killing me. And here is our fabrication area, which recently I've just reorganized. Our bench grinder is back over here with the belt sander. And that is because I want to contain a lot of the metal shavings and whatnot. I, we have our bandsaw here. This unit, I don't even know how old it is. I bought it off Rob at Auto Evolution. It is a tank. It works amazing. It cuts through anything. Miller, thank you Miller for making such a great welding product. This is their TIG and MIG units. I've been using these for seven years now. Kind of crazy to think. And they've been rock solid. And I've moved this bench grinder over here onto the welding table. And this is now strictly for grinding the rods, which I continue to dip. And by the way, thank you to all of you who have given me a bunch of tips on welding. Some of you mentioned, for example, uh, my aluminum welding. I'm using too large a cup. I'm using my flow is uh, too much and I've changed that stuff up and it's worked exceptionally well. This wonderful device is an English wheel and our buddy Dimitri has left it here. Dimitri, when are you picking this up by the way? Like this is just collecting space. Me and Dave are never going to be doing any metal work because we suck at it. So uh, we've got our drill presses here. Obviously this is the big boy, which does a little bit of milling. So that's why we have this one here. And this is kind of our, uh, our quick go-to drill press and whatnot. Both very good tools to have around your workspace. And another recent addition is this uh, Eastwood, I guess it's a brake. It's, it, it bends metal very easily and whatnot. And it's come in very handy lately when I was doing all that fabrication work on the Evo. So it's been uh, a, a welcome addition. One of the often never mentioned tools that we use around the shop are these Zendex Gojacks. These are fabulous. If, you, if you're running a shop and you need to move cars around by your lonesome, these are a huge help. I've been moving the Evo around just by myself with these. The newest addition to our work area of the shop is this Vapor Honing Technologies uh, Vapor Honer or Vapor Blaster. And uh, much like a sand blaster, it's a cabinet that you put parts in and blast parts with. But instead of blasting it with a harsh media like sand or, or something else of that nature, it actually blasts it with a mixture of water and a media inside that water like a glass bead or those types of things and it, it gives you a much nicer finish. It's also much easier on the material, so it doesn't leave as much of a texture on it, and uh, it allows you to get things looking like new again. It's really quite remarkable. If you jump on YouTube, you're on there now, when you're done watching this video, do a search for uh, the Vapor Honing Technologies Weekend Warrior. That's what this unit is, and you'll see in detail what it can do. It's really pretty remarkable, and I'm pretty excited about this, because let's face it, I'm not really over there a lot doing any fabrication, but this is something that I can jump in and make parts look new again, so. Uh, this is DP making himself useful around the shop. All right, guys, it's time for some big reveals, starting with two of the biggest, and that is a Mark IV Supra and an R34 GTR Skyline. I mean, come on, does it get any better than that for a couple of old JDM fanboys like me and Pete? 
we have been dreaming of building these cars for a very long time. I think it's safe to say that the R34 Skyline GTR is a lot of people's dream car, including Pete, who's an old Nissan guy. So this car came to us in a really unusual way. We'll, we'll give you all the details when the build series starts, but uh, it has a really great story to it. What you need to know right now is that it's, it's all original. This thing is pristine. We bought it on auction out of Japan and it is like showroom condition. It's absolutely beautiful. Just know that we got a smoking deal on this thing. Still not a cheap car by any means, but what a deal on a GTR. So really excited to see that come together. And well, me, I'm a Toyota guy. So Mark IV Supra is just like, that is the halo car from this era. It's uh, got the good 2J under the hood already. We don't have to be swapping anything in there. It does have some vintageness happening though. There's some patina to it. Once we show you under the hood, you'll see that it does need a little bit of love. And uh, do I want to say what the gearbox is or do I save that for later? You know what, let's save that for later. A build a little anticipation, but these are going to be dream builds for us and really the first of what we're calling our JDM Legends series. So we're going to build these at the same time. You can follow both builds at the same time. And our plan is to, of course, wrap it up with a good head-to-head -head battle between these two heavy hitters out of uh, Japan. For those of you that have been around since the beginning of our channel and website, you may notice, you may remember this. This is a 1999 BMW 540 Touring, or wagon as some people would like to call it. And I had high hopes for this. I brought this back from California. Still got the California plates on it. I had hopes of putting a 2J swap into this, but eventually we ended up doing the M3, which was a better idea anyway. So I thought to myself, you know what? What would be a good swap contender for this? And I came up with the grand idea of swapping a BMW M5 motor into it. Of course, that makes the most sense. Why not build an E39 M5 Touring? I think that's such a cool idea. It should be a turnkey swap. It's not gonna require a ton of work. So I picked up this parts car, which is actually a exceptional running E39 M5. I'll get into it in the video series, but it's, it was purchased for super cheap. It's a rebuilt title car. Now, I didn't want to leave Dave out of this, so I challenged Dave and said, why don't you go buy yourself a, a large sedan, you know, a cruiser car. Like, we need really cool dailies. We want to have decent dailies. So you'll see what Dave has purchased, because I think it's actually pretty cool too. It actually hasn't arrived yet, so we will get to that pretty soon. I think we're going to try to build those sedans at the same time as we're building the, uh, the GTR and the Supra. And it's pretty obvious that we have added some extra storage back here via Bend Pack 4 post hoists here. This is their 7P model. It is a 100 inches wide, so it's actually their most compact model in that sense. And it's uh, got 110 volt, which I really love because we would have had to run a 240 volt all the way to the back of the shop. These plug into outlets are super easy. They do require air. So actually I just run an airline to it, hook it up and I love them. They've now added so much more space in the back here and they kind of look cool too. For you eagle-eyed viewers out there, you may have noticed this FDRX7 hiding underneath Pete's uh, greasy old M5 up there and this of course is going to be part of our JDM Legends series. It'll follow, probably follow the builds of the uh, GTR and the Supra and that means there's going to be another one to build off against it, which isn't here at the shop yet. Pete's actually hiding it somewhere else. He may give you a bit of a teaser on that later in this episode. I am super stoked on this build because I'm an old rotor rotary guy. I had an RX-8 for years and we did an engine build in that car, which was a really cool experience. They're such fascinating engines. And in fact, we got a smoking deal on this car, both because it's right-hand drive, which isn't necessarily that desirable here in Canada, and because it has a blown motor, which means engine build time. So we actually have a big engine build series planned on this with Valvoline, where we're gonna do a very cool engine build with our buddy Joe Ferguson from RPM Motorsport who is featured in our How to Build a Rotary Engine video. We'll put a link in the description of that video if you wanna see it, but it's been viewed over a million times. I think it's our most viewed video. So we're hoping you guys will dig some more rotary content. I know I'm super pumped on it. As for the other cars that are here now, of course, you'll recognize our 350Z. This car was built as part of our drift build off. And uh, I love this car, it was super fun. And we're now thinking about how can we reinvent it? Cause we're kind of, uh, moving on from the drift car concept and we've thought about uh, maybe doing a build off with it versus an American sports car. So kind of like a Japan versus American battle. So uh, we choose a popular American sports car for that. And in fact, let us know in the comments below what you think of that idea. Would you like to see the 350Z go, go up against some like classic American sports car? Not classic, but popular American sports car. Over here we have our much loved Scion FRS, which we took to Targa Newfoundland and won the Ontario 1500 with. 
It's now got a broken rear axle. We had that happen at our last lapping day, so we need to do a little bit of work there. The front splitter also came off that same day. It's a bit of a catastrophe for us, but uh, the car is needing a little bit of love, so I'm not sure what's gonna happen with it this year. We have a lot planned, as you can see here, so I'm not sure if you're gonna see any wrenching on the FRS this year or not, but it is still, it still has a big place in my heart. I love that car and I'd love to develop it further. My goal is to have as much organization as possible and that always includes nuts and bolts, little odds and ends, and the organization rack continues to expand. I've added this small one here and recently I've added another one because you can never have enough of that. And the toolbox, I mean, the toolbox is pretty standard. You guys know what it is, it's got Wrenches in somewhat organized fashion, socket set right here, as you guys can see. It's, it's okay, it's not like full pro spec. This is my favorite cabinet right here, and that has all of our Milwaukee tools because you can never have enough Milwaukee tools. And as you guys have seen in previous videos, I'm just over the air. I'm now fully converted to being all about the electric tools. And I mean, here it is. This is kind of like our little workbench. We don't use this too often, do we? We kind of like uh, just use it for storage space. We've got all our like thread restorers, some bits and whatnot in here, and then all the other stuff. So, you know, drill bits, some of the electrical stuff, and this is the most important one, guys. You know, you can never have enough Ziploc bags for organization purposes. Moving on to our sticker bombed cabinets here. Our first cabinet is full of all the good stuff from Valvoline. As you can see, we've got racing oils, we've got conventional oils, well, not conventional, full synthetic, but street oils. We've got some uh, Octanium from VP. This stuff worked amazing in the STI. Pete's gonna need all of these to try to keep up in the Evo. We've even got some coolant down there from Xerox, our fluid film kit for undercoating and rust protecting our cars. So that's where all that kind of stuff lives. And over here, oh, we've got our, uh, our quick jack, by the way, which is a really handy tool for getting your car off the ground if you're in a home garage and you don't have room for something like the Ben Pack. This is a great solution. You can even get a battery powered one to take to the racetrack, which I think is a pretty awesome deal. So love that tool. Over here, we've got our cleaning cabinet. It's got all of our paints, our cleaning products from Sonax and our polishes as well from Sonax. You know, all the stuff you need to make your car look shiny and new. And last but not least, there's a lot of important stuff in here. This cabinet we go to quite a lot actually because it's got stuff like, you know, wire wheels, uh, sanding discs, it's got JB weld and hose clamps, just stuff that you seem to need to, to work with when you're putting, building a rusty car or putting an engine back in a car, all that kind of stuff. We've got tapes, we've got some uh, kits down here like our bolt buster and our, uh, our roops polisher. So that's where all that stuff lives. And down here, well, this is where Connie Selica has been spending some time lately, or at least various parts of her as I polish the chrome and uh, refinish the dash pad and all that kind of stuff. So I've been getting some good time in here. And of course, in this last shelf, we've got Connie blown up. She's in boxes now, just living over here, waiting to be reassembled. So there are a few cars that are in our fleet, but not at the shop here. Obviously, Dave is driving the STI. My E28 is hibernating in my garage. I do drive that car on the weekends. And where's the Miata? It is not sold. I was planning on selling it, but then we got the crazy idea of probably case swapping it. Yes, we're gonna try to fit that into our already busy schedule here. As you can see, we have so many cool projects planned for the year. I am beyond excited. I know Dave is as well. So guys, thank you so much for watching. If you'd like this video, definitely give me a thumbs up. Make sure to post in the comments which project are you guys thinking about uh, or you're most or anticipating. I can't wait personally to start that GTR. I'm so excited.